This is the rarest and most important element in the Division 2. I'm going to give you a step-by-step -step guide to bypass RNG and get 64 guaranteed exotics every week without using exploits. Alone, this will help you fully expertise six items every single month. In the Division 2, players are drawn to its immersive gameplay and the addictive cycle of looting and shooting. They invest countless hours in grinding to obtain superior gear and weapons to make amazing builds. But what if I told you the game has undergone a seismic shift? What if in 2024, the real grind no longer revolves around gear, but something far more elusive? Let's find out why. You know, in the Division 2, we've always been laser focused on scoring better gear and weapons, right? That meant hours of grinding missions, taking down enemies, all to get that sweet loot. But guess what? There has been a serious tectonic shift in the grind game. Now it's not as much about the gear as it is about the resources. Resources have always played a crucial role for optimizing your character's build, but nowhere near to what it's like now, especially exotic components. Is Satoshi Nakamoto on the dev team now? You mean that Bitcoin guy? Yeah. You know Satoshi is a time traveler from the future? Who? Who created Bitcoin to solve problems before they even happened? Preventing the end of the world as we know it. How could anybody possibly know that? Did the world end? No. That's what I'm saying. Because of Satoshi. That's some quantum stuff right there, man. Can we not talk about Bitcoin conspiracies right now? You're the one who brought it up. Where was I? Exotic components are the real grind in the game. Right. And they're not just rare, they now serve as the primary currency for your progression journey in The Division 2. They're the lifeblood to staying competitive in the game. But here's the kicker, the expertise system. Oh man, it's like a vampire sucking your resources dry. Especially those precious exotic components. And guess what? It takes a whopping 42 gems to get one gear item up to level 23. And the crafting bench demands its pound of flesh too, especially now that we can reassign attributes on our exotic weapons and let me tell you it's a heavy toll to pay so yeah farming for exotic components has become the ultimate grind in the division 2 and a dose of truth there's no end in sight lucky for you i have a step-by-step -step guide for you to get 64 exotics every single week guaranteed no rng will be involved we will only be using in-game systems along with this book of secrets to pull this off that means the 64 exotics per week i'm going to show you how to get is besides seasonal calendars reward tracks and global events so when those things kick in you're really going to load up i want to assure you that what i'm about to share isn't just theory it's back by real world testing and experience. Define real world. In game testing. Is that better? Better. We'll be diving into the latest methods introduced by the devs in Season 3 and Project Resolve Title Update 20. While we're still awaiting Title Update 20.1 for one thing, everything else is fair game. I've personally tested each method multiple times and even timed them out for you. Now, there's a logical order to this, which I'll explain as we go. Plus, I'll be showcasing everything using two different builds, which I'll show to you too. So are you ready? Let's dive in. In this first part, I'm going to show you how to snag not one, not two, but a whopping 11 exotics in a single gaming session. First up on our agenda is the Summit Project. With the Season 3 Title Update 20, or TU20 as I'll refer to it from now on, this project has become easier and more rewarding. Now you can tackle it on any difficulty level and still rake in XP equivalent to a full level up, along with receiving an exotic cache and a recalibration cache. And here's the kicker. It's now just 15 floors down from the previous 30. The trick here is to blaze through it as quickly as possible. Set the difficulty to hard mode without directives, and I recommend not stopping much for loot. If your inventory is tight, set the loot to mods and convert it all into printer filament when you crush it, which is valuable for the expertise system. Keep an eye out for summit challenges as you climb. Most of them you'll complete naturally anyways. Talented tech, three floors in 15 minutes, three floors without breaking your armor, crate crazy, head honcho, and others will be a breeze and will reward you further with summit caches. One note, 
make sure to visit all loot rooms and even the soda machines as you climb. They're worth the extra effort. One reason we're starting with the summit is to load up on basic resources and materials required for the other exotic farming methods we'll tackle later in this session. It took me about 45 minutes to finish all 15 floors. That's just how long it takes to blitz through and complete all the activities. Lowering the difficulty won't significantly speed things up from here. So now with one exotic down, let's move on to the next. Thanks to TU20, we now have the daily project, which rewards us with one exotic component, one SHD calibration, the second rarest element, half a level of XP, a recalibration cache, gear, and more. I highly recommend tackling this next. You can save the project list to track on your screen. For my run, I chose public executions and territory controls for the activities. Keep in mind that named bosses around the way and rogue encounters won't count towards your activities and occupied resource nodes sometimes do count, but sometimes they don't. So it's just best to avoid them. Start by tackling a control point. You have to supply one of these anyways, and it's possible that completing one control point can fulfill all activity requirements in the project except the mission. The mission itself took the longest, around 15 minutes for me. Be sure to grab any and all resources that are easy to grab at all of the activity locations. I did this on heroic difficulty with five directives, and it took me a total of 25 minutes to complete the entire project. The directives aren't required, but they gave me a 125% more XP bonus on all those activities. Keep in mind, this won't affect the project XP bonus. And if you're wondering, my XP farm build makes it all feel like child play. Plus, the build just got an upgrade in Season 3. Remember, you can tackle this one daily. So now, with two exotics in our pockets, let's move on to the next step. Next up is an easy one, the SHD Requisition Project. And this one's a breeze. I include it here in the list because often you'll need to farm resources like water, components, and food, and sometimes even other materials like electronics. We were grabbing all of that as we were completing the first two projects. Plus, this one has also been upgraded. You now get a full level of XP for completing it along with a named item cache and an exotic cache. It literally takes no time to complete this, especially if you ensured you had the resources ahead of time. So with the three exotics now in our stash, let's move on to the next step. Now, let's talk about the weekly project. And let me tell you, it's got some serious juice. We're talking three exotic components and five SHD calibrations. Huge rewards. Plus, you'll snag a named item cache, a weapon crafting cache, two equipment items, and a full level worth of XP. I tackled this on heroic difficulty without directives, and it took me about an hour. I was testing new builds while playing this, but I recommend running this with five directives on heroic using the recommended XP farm build. When I was testing, I basically used an all red striker build to complete this without directives, and honestly, the XP farm build with five directives would have actually made it easier. I know that sounds strange, but trust me, the build explains it all. So with six total exotics now in our stash, let's see what's next. The Descent Project has some upgrades and its requirements have been nerfed which is pretty cool there are many benefits to the system beyond just the exotic but we'll save that for later discussions for now what you need to know is that beating the nemesis gives you a guaranteed exotic and a 50 percent chance at a reconstructed cache that holds a named item blueprint very rare and rewarding. The project itself doesn't give exotics. It offers a different reward related to collectibles. However, you'll also be earning NSA tech along the way. And this is now a vendor currency you can use to buy exotic caches and more. So over time, those will be bonus guaranteed exotics. In this session, I earned 84 credits in about 45 minutes and it costs 224 exotics. So roughly two hours of gameplay would get you an exotic. I skipped the boss rooms in this run, which would have awarded more, but slowed my progress to the nemesis. RNG determines how often you see the boss rooms. On another run, I saw three boss rooms before I saw the nemesis, so things can add up. They also made changes so you can reach the nemesis in four loops, which means you'll also be rewarded with two simulation caches, which contain gear. You'll be earning XP while you're in there, and directives are supposed to not affect it. It took me 45 minutes to beat the nemesis and I gained three levels while I was in there. Now we have seven total exotics. I wanna quickly mention that you can farm the nemesis repeatedly for the exotics and the chance for a blueprint. In this run, I got the chain killer chest piece blueprint. 
So I'm stoked. Additionally, I received two simulation caches and another exotic that went straight to my inventory. I thought that was odd. Has anybody else seen this? Well, it's nice that RNG delivered it. I doubt that's a guarantee. So I won't be adding that to our total for this guide. We'll discuss more about this later on. Next up is Countdown. This is arguably the best overall farm in the game, but it does come with the catch. You need to do it with a group. However, it's super casual and easy. There are only three things you must know to succeed here. First, follow the leader and stick with the group. This ensures you learn the way and successfully extract. Second, use a certified countdown build. I've got you covered on that. Finally, make sure you have no less than 50 available slots in your inventory when you go in. It'll be raining gear and there isn't time to sort through it all. This is typically a 20 minute game mode on average and you can customize your targeted loot. You'll accumulate countdown credits, which you can spend at the vendor to buy exotic caches. Since some players tend to drop out before you finish, I recommend playing on challenging difficulty. The loot is just as good as playing on heroic and you'll average around 150 credits per run. With exotic caches costing 224 credits each, you'll be able to get two caches in an hour. Now you have a total of nine exotics and a full stash. Now let's talk about the legendary project. This one got a significant upgrade. You'll receive an exotic, two recalibration caches, an optimization cache, and a crafting cache. These are some fantastic additions. However, this is the hardest project, not because it's legendary, but because if you're using random matchmaking, the playthrough can sometimes be rocky. Otherwise, it's excellent in-game content. The stronghold will rotate every week between the main three. On average, it will take you about an hour to complete, and just like that, you'll have 10 total exotics in your arsenal. Now let's talk about something new and exciting, the hidden vendor announced by the devs for season three. Although it's not available in TU20, it will be in TU20.1, which is just a few weeks away. This vendor operates similarly to Cassie Mendoza and will reset weekly. You can use textiles to buy exotic caches from him. The catch is that he has a limited inventory, so you can only buy one exotic per week. Still, it's an easy addition to your exotic collection. And just like that, you have 11 total exotics in your arsenal. You're going to be able to spend that stockpile you forgot was even there on exotics? Yeah, and named items and other caches too. Hmm, sus. How is that sus? A creepy guy hiding in a dark alley luring you in with treats? There's always a catch. It starts off friendly. Next thing you know, it's Hiya Georgie! A tussle and you wake up dead floating in the sewer staring at a bright light. You mean like it? Wait, how do you wake up dead? Cause you're alive when you go to sleep. I lost my best friend that way. Which friend? I'd rather not talk about it. I don't even know why I even asked. I want to take a quick break to show you the builds I rely on for this. This is my latest and greatest XP farm build for 2024. It is really unstoppable and makes all directives on Heroic super easy for solo playthrough, which is how you want to tackle most of these. This is the countdown build I use. I basically only use two or three builds when I go in there. If you want a more in-depth walkthrough on each of these builds, this is the one for you. If you made it this far, I'm glad, because now we're going to break into how to push from 11 total exotics in a single day to 64 exotics in a single week, every week. Consider this your tactical exotic farm plan. For this part, you are going to need multiple characters. I hope by now most of you know that multiple characters are essential in The Division 2. I think it's the underlining theme in almost every guide I create. But in case you're new, here's the quick rundown on why. When it comes to resources, nothing surpasses the advantage of multiple characters. The reason lies in the invaluable access to the rarest resource of all, stash space. Inventory space is real and a constant challenge, making these characters essential mules for safeguarding access to accumulating various resources in bulk quickly. That's critical to making the expertise system more manageable. The brilliance of this approach lies in the passive buildup of watch currency on your mules as your main character progresses, and they bring an expanded ability to acquire easy project exotics. And since all these projects got easier and more rewarding, this farm method stands out to be on top even more. For those new to the game, 
look to creating additional characters at the earliest opportunity after you reach level 40. This is how to do it. First, book a flight to New York. Destroy anything that moves, steal this guy's watch, come back to DC, meet up with this crazy lady, buy these blueprints, and boom. This can take one to five to six hours depending on your strategy. Good news, I have a brand new 2024 character boosting strategy coming your way. Turn on those notifications. You don't want to miss out on this one. Also, if you want the ultimate guide to managing resources in the Division 2, this is the one. Here's the play-by-play -play you need to know. If inventory space and resources are a priority for you, I don't recommend using mules as active players. Each character needs to have 10 free spaces in their inventory, and so does your stash. Load up your mules watch points as you can, starting with crit chance, armor, reload speed, and skill damage. Create this build on your primary character. The goal is to have six skill tiers above all else. The memento, technician, the capacitor, and these skills. Don't worry about the skill damage at first. Crits are okay too. You can tune the build over time as you see fit. Save this in your loadouts and name it Share. Equip a different build and then send Share to your stash. The gear mods will go with it, but not the skill mods. That's okay. Go to your first mule and make sure there is a build saved in your loadouts. It can be random. Name it junk build or whatever. Assemble a build from your primary character that is now in your stash piece by piece to match the original design. Equip technician as your specialization. It's okay if you don't have any specialization points on it yet. Save this build to your loadouts and name it share. Equip your junk build, send share back to the stash. You can now export and import the build from the stash. Be sure to test it out. If your tune or stash doesn't have enough inventory space, it won't port, so delete something. Repeat this process on your other two characters. Congratulations, you now have a killer build suitable for all the projects, including the legendary project. You will repeat these particular projects for the three mules. Run the summit. This will provide three more exotics because of all your mules. With the original 11 from your primary character, you're now at 14 total exotics. Run the daily project for each mule each day for 21 more exotics. These are fast and easy. The total is now 35 exotics. And you will do this with your main character too. We already counted his day one, so we get plus six. We're now at 41 total exotics for the week. Do your SHD requisition project with each mule for three more exotics. You now have 44 total exotics. Remember to do the summit project first so you get some resources to donate. Do the weekly project with the three mules for nine more exotics. Now you have 53 total exotics. We're not done. Now the legendary project with each for three exotics. You're at 56 total exotics. And yes, the build that you're using will work in legendary. Now visit the textile vendor to put you at 59 total exotics for the week. The last steps are for your primary character. Both Countdown and Descent offer unique awards enough to do each of them multiple times per week. After I did each multiple times, as far as non-RNG based exotics go, they are both roughly the same per hour. Countdown is faster at face value, but once those NSA credits start to contribute, things begin to even out. But the reason why you want to continue to do both more than once per week is because of their additional benefits too. Descent does not require a build or a high watch. You don't need a group and it gives you very valuable blueprints that you can't get elsewhere. Countdown fills your bag with named items and targeted loot like no other. So I recommend doing two more hours of countdown gameplay over the course of a week. You're probably doing more than that anyways. That would give you four more exotics, six from this game mode in total when we count the day one run. And do one more run in December for the week. Bring this to a grand grand total of 64 exotics in one week, not counting RNG drops and what you can do in the dark zone. And we're not counting global events or reward tracks either. Look, it costs 42 exotics to take an item to level 23. This means this method alone will contribute to six fully expertise gear items per month. 
add that to what you're getting from the global events and you will have all your faves done in no time. And if you do all of these, as I suggested, as a byproduct, you're going to be topping off your other materials as well. And your watch is going to explode like the Big Bang. Remember, all the benefits are shared across all your characters. Tuesday is reset day in the Division 2. It's the perfect time to kick off your new routine. Try this next week and tell me what you think. I'll be doing it too. So how many exotic components do you have so far? I want to hear some lows and some highs. If you got a nice routine, help the community out by sharing your favorite ways to peak your inventory. Thank you for hanging out with me today. My name is Tuxedo Bandito. That's Tito Bandito. You know it. And this was another episode of The Division 2. If you found this video helpful, subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in The Division 2. And if you like builds like this, check out the recommended build video I have here for you. If you have anything you want to see covered, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible. Tux Nation wouldn't be without you. Follow me. I get it.